Good morning. This is our regular Sunday morning family service here at the Midwest Buddhist Temple. And it seems there's so much going on from now. We're just three weeks away from our Obon and Hatsubon service, which will be on July 9th. On July 8th will be our Bon Odori, the dances to remember our ancestors, having a festival. This week is the summer solstice the longest day of the year, and the first day of summer. At least we have the calendar summer. Um, and today is Father's Day, and we honor all fathers. We recognize that we all have fathers, biological fathers, stepfathers, adopted fathers, and father-like men who have affected our lives. They were uncles, friends, and father figures that helped each of us be become the person we are today. There is much um, to remember, much to appreciate. Um, I certainly remember my father and appreciate him very much. And there were uncles and father-like figures, you know, in my life that I appreciated. So we celebrate Father's Day in a broader sense than just, you know, a, maybe your biological father. All the fathers in our lives. Also at this time of year, this is, yesterday was Juneteenth, um, the new national holiday. Um, it's a state and national holiday now. It celebrates the June 19th, uh, 9, 1865. And it was on that day, two years after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, free ending slavery in the United States. It wasn't until two years later, June 19th, 1965, Certainly not the internet age. Um, but it was two years later that the last of the American slaves were freed in Galveston, Texas. Freedom from slavery seems so basic. Yet the brutality of slavery has taken, it, has taken different forms in the ensuing years. Hopefully this history will become common knowledge and taught throughout all the schools from now on and become part of the common knowledge in general. Juneteenth is a celebration for freedom and a reminder that freedoms are worth fighting for and freedoms are to be cherished because freedom is not free. Freedom is something Americans take for granted. And I think we all assume that freedoms are common, but it is not. Certainly in our history, the freedom from slavery uh, was granted. We have free of s freedom of speech. <coughs> we have the freedom for all citizens to vote. We have freedom of religion. And these are just a, a few of the religion, uh, freedoms we take for granted. But in re reality, it is much different. We have to be diligent and pay attention so that others are not taking away our freedoms. There are some states and areas that are trying to limit the right to vote by making it difficult to register to vote. Are put or putting up barriers for actual voting. There are groups that believe Americans should all be, that America should be a Christian country, whatever that means. Freedom of religion is one of the fundamental principles of American democracy. So many of the original immigrants to North America 
came here to be free of religious oppression that they faced somewhere in Europe. Yet throughout American history, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, and others are not made to feel welcome at all times. And Juneteenth is sort of a reminder that our freedoms, to our reminder of our freedoms and to celebrate our freedoms. Juneteenth is a time to celebrate being a Buddhist and having our freedoms. Part of this past week, my wife Elaine and I were in Los Angeles to support the Okaidi, Okaidi's first queer obon. Okaidi is an organization of Japanese American and Japanese um, people who identify as being part of the LGBTQ plus community and its supporters or what they call allies. Of course, the LGBT, LGBTQ plus stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning, intersex, asexual, and more. That is the plus, the more. This community um, is a community of people who have come together uh, in Okaidi to have mutual support and to feel respected and loved. All too often, those who are part of the LGBTQ plus community are often isolated and perhaps sometimes shunned, often the target of prejudice, violence, and hatred because they are different. The LGBTQ plus community in general has become a political target of some conservative political groups and states, but somehow it doesn't feel, doesn't feel correct uh, to be so intolerant, not to be able to accept anything or anyone different from ourselves. So it is a um, community of support Okaidi, and there's a Buddhist subgroup we call, they call Ichimi, um, One Taste. Uh, Ichimi is based in the Gardena Buddhist Temple um, in Southern California. But Okaidi and uh, Ichimi helps sponsor this first queer obon. Um, it's the first step for the community of people who could celebrate Obon in their own community and to feel safe. For, an organi for the organizers of this event, it was a huge success. There, the queer Obon started with a short service led by Reverend Amy Umezu of the West Los Angeles Buddhist Temple and assisted by Reverend John Iwahara of the Gardena Buddhist Church and Reverend Keisuke Miyaki of the Buddhist Church of San Francisco. And I have to give a little shout out to Reverend Keisuke who spoke in Japanese and in his short talk he referred to the Amida Sutra and the part exactly that we read this morning uh, in the first reading. Uh, to shorten and paraphrase, it said, blue flowers radiate blue light, red flowers radiate red light, white flowers radiate white light. And this is usually a reference to naturalness. Of course, a white flower we see as white, red flower we see as red. That's natural. But he went a step further in his message and reminded us that a red flower cannot radiate white light no matter how much 
they may try. And a um, <clears throat> blue flower could not radiate red light no matter how much it would try. What this means is that no matter how much we try to change or be something that we are not, we cannot do it. A red flower cannot radiate white light. And that is natural. So that is the other side of naturalness, to be who you are. Um, and all of us cannot be something that we're not both ways. And during the uh, queer obon, there were seven obon songs and dances, and almost everyone danced. And for the intermission, there was a dance by Jia Ichikawa, and then a minyo number by Jia, Elaine, and Jan Mita. Jan is, now lives in Gardena, but um, is a former MBT minyo club member, and they danced together um, a number. And so you can say MBT was well represented at this first queer obon. It was wonderful to see perhaps 400 people enjoying the obon dance with no fear and having a great time and not to be afraid to be around others. Um, it was held at the new Terasaki Budokan, which is an like an athletic center in, in downtown Los Angeles in close to uh, Little Tokyo. Um, so it was, it was a very, very nice event. So, and what we have to do is to be open and accepting of all people who are different, and in particular those who have a different sexual preference or identity. And along those lines, um, while we were in Los Angeles this past week and was watching a little bit of television, it was the opening ceremony of the Special Olympics it was held in Germany this year. And there was a little quip, a little tidbit by one of the announcers, and I don't remember who it was, and he was referring to a team um, that um, started a new trend by wearing mismatch stockings on purpose, symbolic that not everyone is the same. And these are Special Olympics uh, people who physically, mentally are not you know, perhaps, quote unquote, normal. <laughs> um, but they were different. And I thought it was very interesting. Mismatch stockings on purpose. Hmm. That means you could go to the drawer and pick anything, right? <laughs> Maybe it's not such a bad idea. Never mind. Um, but the whole idea, it's symbolic that not everyone is the same. And I thought that was a great um, symbolism for the weekend of the queer obon. And Shin Buddhism, our school of Buddhism, is certainly like mismatched stockings because different sizes, different colors, different materials, everything is different. In Shin Buddhism, we actually celebrate differences. Each of us is a flower of a different color. But we are making up, by being different, the colorful and beautiful garden. Because we're not the same, the garden is more beautiful. <coughs> so today, let us remember our fathers. Let us remember that freedom is not free. Let us remember to include everyone as we celebrate the beginning of summer and so much more. It is Shinran's understanding 
of the vows of Amida Buddha that were fulfilled. That says, come as you are. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, if you're literate or educated, or illiterate or educated, if you are a former slave or a land landowner or whatever. Just come as you are. Amida's compassion embraces everyone without exception. Now, Mami Damus, with gratitude and kindness beyond words. Now, Mami Damus.